Welcome to today's episode of Wreck at Home. Today we will be creating three under the sea art projects including upcycled coral reefs, whale dream houses, and cardboard fish painting. Hey happy campers, welcome back to Wreck at Home. My name is Miss Lizzie and our theme this week is underwater. So I was thinking we'd take a deep dive into the ocean and maybe make some coral reefs. Like this guy right here. Today's fun fact centers around coral reefs. I'm wondering if you guys know these maybe from a TV show about a sponge and his friends, or maybe a video game that features little biomes of different ecosystems? Well, coral reefs are actually made out of coral polyps, which are in fact animals. I know, it's weird, they don't have eyes or faces or anything, but yeah, they're animals. They all come together in these giant colonies and form these huge masses that you see here. As for our supplies today, we're going to need some colorful construction paper, a toilet paper roll or some cardboard, a glue stick, we're sticking our stuff together, some scissors for some minor cutting, and our trusty pencil. Before we get started, let's go over our rules with our fishy friend over here. Hey, don't forget to try your best. Art isn't about making the perfect thing, but it's about having fun. Second, make sure to be safe, especially when using scissors. Those things are sharp. And our third rule is be kind to others. If you make a mess, don't forget to clean it up and thank anybody who helped you along the way. So let's start with the base for our coral plates. I'm gonna be using one of these little toilet paper rolls that we finished up to kind of follow our model that's over here. But if you don't have a toilet paper roll on hand, you can also make one yourself with some spare flat cardboard by turning it into a tube and taking it around the sides like right there. Or you can also experiment by just using a flat piece of cardboard and we can do the same decorations like this but in a 2D version. And so the next thing we're going to move on to is the actual coral reef part and for that I need to get a measurement of my surface. So if I'm using this flat surface it's a lot easier. What I would do in this case is I would take my construction paper that I want to put around my cardboard piece and I would just trace it around here with a pencil just like this, so I can cover the whole surface. And then I would go in with some scissors and cut right there. So this one's super easy. If we have a paper roll like this, the, the process is going to be a little tougher, but if you follow me along, I'll guide you right through it. I'm gonna take my paper roll, and I'm gonna grab the paper that I'm used to put around it, and I'm gonna line it up with the edge like this. And using my pencil, I'm just gonna take a measurement of the length of the tube. And the length of the tube is the longest part that's, a, that's on this side. And I'm just gonna do that same thing all along the rest of this paper, putting little lines there with my pencil. What I'm gonna do so I can have a nice straight line because I don't have a ruler on hand, I'm just going to take my paper and fold it along the markings I did. I'm going to flatten that out and take my scissors. I'm just going to cut clean across that line that I made. Cool. I'm going to put this piece aside. I'm going to grab my piece again. And then using my same paper roll, I'm going to make sure that it fits all along it. So I'm going to experiment. I'm just going to hold it with my hands on one end. I'm going to roll the piece of paper around it. And it looks like my paper is too long, so I don't need all this extra paper here. And in fact, I could use that for other parts of our project. I'm just going to make sure that this end of the paper that's connected to the roll is going to touch with some more paper on the other end. And a little extra, so I'm going to use my pencil and right on the extra piece of paper. I'm just gonna put another line right there. Clean across. Now I have the size of my roll on this paper and I'm gonna go back with my scissors and cut there too. So now you should have a piece of paper, the exact size for your roll to wrap around it. So I'm just gonna put that aside for now. And with my paper, I'm going to keep that there with me and make a selection of some other colors that I might like. So here I have some yellow, orange, and blue pieces of paper. 
And these guys are gonna make up the coral plates of our coral reef here. Before I move on to just showing you the next step, I wanna break down how this thing works. So I'm gonna take my old example here and I'm going to cut this thing open. And I'm gonna show you what went into this. So this is the flat version of the project. And how I did that is that I stuck through these individual coral pieces, which are just ripped up construction paper. And so I can take that out right here so you can see it. And so these guys are just individual cut up pieces that we're gonna do later. And this is the same piece of paper that we have down here essentially. I don't have a tube in there, and that's how I found out this was much harder to do straight onto the surface that we're working on. That's why we have this thing instead. So let me take this away from here and replace it with a new one. Now we got our little fish friend here. So to get started, I'm gonna take the piece of paper that I cut and I think I want to plan this one a little more than I did my old one here. So I might want to take my pencil and maybe decide where I want my corals to pop out of. So I'm just going to plan out some lines. Maybe I want to do a cut here, a cut here, one here. And I want to put a lot of cuts in here because I want to have a nice dense coral reef. So I'm going to do maybe six, uh, let's say ten. There we go, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just as I planned. And so it's super easy to cut a piece of paper as opposed to a roll of tube. So that's why I thought this way would be a lot faster and easier. And so I'm just gonna take my piece of paper and kind of fold it in half lightly, not too hard. We don't wanna leave too much of a line. And I'm just gonna cut a little slip right there, following the line I drew earlier. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing for the rest of these guys. Sweet. So now you should have something with a couple of slits like this. And so we're going to set this aside for now because we are done with this part. For this next part, we're going to make our separate coral plates. And what they are is just cut up construction paper. And really, I just tore these with my hand to have that really cool edge like this. So I'm going to take my big construction paper and just start tearing some strips for myself. And I'm just gonna eyeball it, but if it helps, you can also give yourself a little bit of a pattern on the back so you can make sure that you're trying to aim for a specific size. And I like to make sure that I have this little, this little ridge area here so I can put it into my paper later. And so just with my hands, I'm just gonna go in and tear around that line I made. Not really worrying that it's perfect, but so long as we have something that looks like that shape, just like that, and there we go. And I'm just gonna make a ton of these. I'm thinking if I have 10 holes there, I wanna put three little pieces of coral, so what's 10 times three? I think that's 30, right? All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna make 30 pieces of these construction paper things. coral reef flaps. All right, so now that I have these guys, I'm gonna keep them along with me right here. I'm gonna move away all my scraps so I don't have all this stuff cluttering the area. For the next step, I'm going to start assembling our coral reef. So I'm gonna take our base piece of construction paper and our little coral reef plate parts. And if you have double-sided construction paper, this isn't gonna be a problem for you. You can just put, start putting in your coral reefs into the little holes. But if you have this two-tone paper like I do, that's white on one side and colorful on the other, same with your coral reef parts, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your color part is touching the color part. And then you're going to slip your coral reef piece into this part so that when you bring down your piece of paper later, your little flap is face up with the color. So I'm just going to start doing that for all of my pieces and I'm going to mix and match them so that they're nice and colorful on each one. So I'm going to pick these three for this part, bring them together at the end, and I'm just going to slip them through one of these little openings. 
And if you want to make sure this is nice and secure, I'm going to recommend that you put some glue on the inside part. So whatever you designated as the interior part of your coral reef, you're going to take some glue and put it on the little interior flap. So I'm going to glue down this blue piece. I'm gluing down my yellow piece and I'm going to glue down my orange piece just so that when we start rolling it onto the tube or doing anything else, these guys won't fall out. And I'm going to keep repeating that for all of these guys, alternating some colors. So this time I want blue on top and orange on the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing and put it through the little opening. Now sometimes you might have a problem where they don't fit right. Feel free to always go back in and maybe make the, the inside ridge a little thinner for some of these guys. There we go. That's a good fit. Then, like I did before, I'm going to pull these guys up and put some glue on each of these little guys so that they're nice and stuck down. This is a good spot to pause the video while I finish the rest of this off camera. And now that we are done, gluing down all our ridges. The next part, we're going to connect it back onto our harder surface. So that means onto our tube or onto our flat cardboard surface that we had from earlier. So super easy if you have the cardboard that's just like this little flat guy and you measured this out before, you're just gonna paste it right on with some glue and then bring down your ridges. But then if you have a tube like this, what we're gonna do is pretty much the same process with our glue stick from before, I'm just going to pick one of these ridges to be the starting point, and I'm going to pick this left side for myself. And I'm going to paste my tube right onto it, and I'm trying to aim for my tube being aligned with my construction paper. Just like that. And then I'm just going to go and liberally put in some more glue all along my Along, all along the back of my construction paper like this and grabbing the edge of my construction paper that I glued in the beginning I'm going to just go ahead and roll this on there all right awesome so you might have something that looks like this weird mess of paper for now but to get our coral reef part all we're gonna do now is starting from the bottom of your coral reef, is start bringing down some of these flaps. Just with your fingers and gently bringing these guys down so that they create something like this flat ridge right here. And you just go all around, bringing them down. And if you glued everything right, it shouldn't be popping up. But if you want, just in case, put your finger at the bottom of the ridge and then just bring them down. And just like that you get yourself a coral cool reef. If you want to make the project a little more challenging, you can definitely add more of these coral reef pieces to make them fuller and more beautiful coral. And if you want to keep it a little easier, stick to 2D for a little bit. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you next time. Hey, happy campers. Welcome to Rec at Home. My name is Mr. Jim, and this week's theme is Under the Sea. We are going to be making our very own dream houses inside of a whale, just like the whale that I'm inside of right now. Are you ready for another game of Scrabble, Sea Cucumber? Uh. He never loses. All right, guys, it's about time I told you about Migaloo, the first documented all-white humpback whale. He first made his appearance near Australia in 1991 and has been seen about 50 times since. Marine biologists think that Migaloo is about 30 years old and humpback whales can live to about 50. Migaloo is thought to be albino. What's albino you say? B -b 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 bonus fact. So albino animals are born without color in their skin, hair, and eyes. So they look mostly white. Wait, is my dog albino? That's different, all Maltesers are white. Ruff, ruff. Because he's so recognizable, scientists can better understand how whales travel the oceans because he's just so easy to spot. If you'd like to learn more about Migaloo, he has his own website and even has his own Twitter feed. I even have 10,000 followers. Yeah! Now it's time to do the project, so let's get our supplies together. I'm lucky this whale swallowed some art supplies too. 
First you're going to need some paper. It can be any size. Just make sure you're using thicker paper if you're using watercolor. Next you'll need a pencil to do most of your drawing. A sharpie is great to make your lines darker. But remember, sharpies are permanent, so ask permission first. It's really up to you on what materials to use to add color. I'm using watercolor, but make sure you have your watercolor set, water, and paper towels. And of course, don't forget your paintbrush. The first thing I have to do is draw my whale. You could see here, I just looked up whale cartoon on the computer and this came up. That's going to be my inspiration. I want to try to draw this whale so it fills up most of the page because most of my artwork is going to be happening inside the whale. Now I'm drawing not too dark just in case I make mistakes, which I probably will because if I do that I'll be able to erase a little bit easier. So boys and girls this took me a lot of time to practice. This may take you two, three, four times until you get it right and that's okay. You can see I even made a mistake here which I'm erasing. Mistakes are okay. It's part of every art project. Remember nothing is perfect. It's time for detail. Let me draw the eye here, and then maybe some teeth. Everything looks better with teeth. All right, now whales breathe through their blowhole, so let me add that detail on the top, and I should be ready for my next step. Sharpie! Okay, so I have to be careful with Sharpie because it's a bit more permanent. I want to be careful not to dig at this on the table, my clothes, or even my hands because it's a little harder to wash off. I'm just going to go around the outside of my whale just so I can show a little bit more detail and definition. And the best thing about Sharpie is when it gets wet, it won't smudge. Okay, now time to design the dream house. I'm going to separate the inside into boxes. So watch this. I'm going to draw a line across and then each line going down will create a room. So I've already created four rooms of my whale. Now five. Now six, look how easy that was. I just broke apart the space with some lines. Now I get to design each room. For this one, I'm gonna draw my bed here, plus a ladder going up because it's a bit hard to reach. You can really use your imagination. Here, I'll add a ladder as well to get to that top part of the tail, which is difficult to access, just like in a real house. All right, these wavy lines here, maybe that could be something interesting. You can really, really get creative here. And if you just draw boxes and different lines, before you know it, you will get something. Maybe this will be my kitchen, and I could add some detail. I'm drawing pretty quickly, but you can please, please, please take your time. This is actually the most fun part of the project. After designing my bed and kitchen, I really need to get the priorities down. So check this out. Here's my planetarium. Every whale dream house needs a planetarium. We all know exercise is hard to get inside the whale, so let me design a gym. I'll put in a basketball hoop and maybe a giant trampoline too. Even though I'll probably jump right to the top of that whale, it will help me dunk a little bit easier. Now that I have the ladder, I can actually now draw the details of the bed. There you go. Now I'll need a TV where I can watch my art videos. So there's my big flat screen TV and might as well have a PlayStation 5 here too. That would be awesome. I'm not sure how electricity works inside of a whale, but I think I could figure it out. There's my stereo. Okay, now that I have a planetarium, I'm thinking I might need an aquarium. My favorite type of fish is the anglerfish because they're just so weird. So let me get my small family of anglerfish here and I can't forget to add my coral too just so there's a little bit of decoration. Every whale dream house needs an emergency exit, so let me build this right here on the fin. Oh wow, I forgot the most important part, the artist studio. So let me start with my perfect lighting. Every artist needs good light, and maybe this could be my shelf of art books. I really love looking through art books. And maybe this, ooh, this is a little hard to draw, but there's my easel. Again, not perfect, but you get the idea. And here are my brushes right, and other art materials that I'll need to create my masterpiece. It might be cool if I write the name of each room on top of the design. You can always ask for help with spelling. Now it's time for color. So you dip your brush in the water and then you just swirl around the paint. I'm going to start with blue because I think I'm just going to do the outside of the whale to look like it's underwater. Now remember, water is not 
only blue. It's many colors. So I'm gonna get creative here and add some kind of a turquoise color and maybe even a little bit of green. It's really up to you. If you want this whale to swim in lava, go for it. It will make it look awesome. Wow, what do you guys think? I think it's just about done. Oh, you know what? Let me add some color on these anglerfish. How about magenta anglerfish? Yeah, I think that's the finishing touch. It's up to you how much you want to add. Remember, it's your whale dream house. Did you draw something too, sea cucumber? <laughs> Hey happy cameras, it's Jen again and I can't wait to do this project with you. Um, we're gonna do cardboard fish painting today. Um, so what you'll need is a, a list that I will provide um, after this intro so you can get your supplies ready and we can get started. Now did you know there's 30,000 varieties of, so get on the computer, print out a uh, picture of a fish you like, join me in the studio and I'll see you in a second. Hi friends, so let's go ahead and get started. So what you're gonna need today are um, a picture of a fish. I chose a goldfish today and a pencil. And if you have a butter knife or if your parents allow you to use an X-Acto blade, that's gonna come in handy, but only if your parents say it's okay. You're also gonna need some brushes a piece of cardboard and with the cardboard you want to make sure that the lines of the cardboard go side to side not up and down okay you're gonna need a crayon or an oil pastel and what I use is a sheet of aluminum foil with some paint now the different types of paint you can use you can use acrylic or tempera no problem there just something that um, that you won't be able to see through when you cover your fish all right, well, there's two ways to do this. You can take and just free draw your fish by looking at the picture and drawing here, but I actually have a little bit of a hack. So what you can do is you can take this crayon or oil pastel, flip your photo over and cover it with a really dark color. I'm using black. And you can do this with anything. You can use a um, picture that you print off the computer, or you can use a magazine, anything you want. So just remember, this is a technique you can use for any project if you wanna transfer something very specific. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take and flip this over right onto our cardboard. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trace. So I'm gonna use my pencil and trace. And I make sure I get all of the lines here that I want to make sure gets transferred. I've had so many goldfish friends growing up. I wonder if you all have goldfish. It's kind of my favorite fish. Okay, here we go. And I want to make sure I have where the scales start and maybe even draw in a couple scales so I know that's the direction that they're going to go. Okay. Ooh, and where his eye is. The eye is a very important part of the fish. So when we lift this up, we have a nice transfer. Okay. And you can even draw in some of the, the extra lines if you want. So we're going to use this as our photo source for when we paint. Let's see, so there he is, and there is our transfer. All right, so here's where it gets good. So what you wanna do is, um, for those of you who 
um, don't have permission to use an exacto blade that's okay you can take a pencil and I just want you to kind of dig into by making little holes around your fish make sure your pencil is sharp and we're just going to punch through the outline okay and what we can do just to make it go a little bit oop, a little bit faster is well we can even use the broken part when it, even when a pencil breaks and you're just going to tear this top layer off and if you need an adult to help you, I would say it's a good time to ask for help on this step, at least to get the thing outlined and around. I'm also going to show you this with the X-Acto blade. You can also use a butter knife, which is better, but you'll see how much easier this is. You just make some cuts, and you just want to make sure you're always cutting away from your fingers. So see, my fingers are over here, and I'm cutting away. see. And we're just tearing away from the fish so we get this really nice texture underneath. This step is going to take about 15 minutes so we're going to speed it up. Fish, and here is my goldfish on cardboard. So that was the fun part. All we're going to do is paint. So what I would recommend is you do the the um, water around the fish first. That way you have a better sense of where your um, fish is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a nice tone of blue and white. I'm going to do a light blue. And I'm just going to fill in these areas. All right, I'm liking that a lot. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your larger brush in some water, in a water cup here. I forgot to mention, you need a water cup to put your, your brushes in. And I'm gonna take a smaller brush and I'm going to paint my goldfish. And I'm gonna use a little bit of red and yellow Red and yellow mixed together. Does anyone know what color that makes? You guys are so smart. It makes orange. So I'm going to just paint little Henry orange. 
And I'm starting with a light layer because I want to add some other paint on top. But I know he's pretty much one color. And that's this really nice bright orange. I'm even going to cover over his eye for now. take and move them up so you can see them as a final product. Here we go. Now from this point you can add as much as you want. You can add some waves, you can add some bubbles, you can add whatever you want to your fish. So until next week my friends, stay creative and make a lot of art. You guys are all artists and you're all wonderful. See you next week.